The Army is not all sunshine and rainbows. There are some jobs or some MOSs in the Army that I feel suck pretty bad. And I'm gonna give you my opinion as far as which five MOSs are the worst ones. Does that mean that because these are the five that I'm telling you are the worst, that means you should not join in those MOSs? No, definitely not. There are some good reasons why maybe it's a good MOS for you, but if I was to pick five MOSs specifically as far as which ones I feel are the worst, these would be them. Now I gotta give a little bit of a disclaimer because there's obviously going to be some butthurt individuals out there because their MOS is on this list. Maybe they were in this MOS in the army or they want to or whatever the case is, but this doesn't mean don't join these MOSs. There are some good reasons why you should join these MOSs and some good reasons why you should not join these MOSs. But if I was to have to pick five MOSs that I feel like are the worst options in my opinion and why, these would be them. So we're gonna dive into those. I'm gonna save, I feel like, the most controversial one for the last one, but this is not in any specific order. It's just these are the five ones. And I'm not really specifying which one is the worst and which one is the least worst, I don't know. But these are just five specific ones, and we're gonna start with the first one, which is a 92 Golf, a culinary specialist. If you're someone that likes to cook and you wanna be a chef when you get out of the army, then sure, this might be a great MOS for you. But the reason why I've included it on my top five worst ones is these guys have like the worst hours probably in the army. You gotta think they do breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? They have to be able to provide those soldiers with these meals and they break it up into shifts because if they didn't, this would be probably like easily like a 20 hour day or something ridiculously crazy. But that means that that starts off pretty early and then there's another shift that has to go kind of late. I have seen individuals that were, they are like leaving the barracks like at 4.30 in the morning, something like that, because they have to be in the chow hall at five o'clock to start preparing for breakfast chow that's gonna start at 7.30. So these individuals have some extremely early hours they have to work and then they work up into maybe some somewhere in the middle of the day type of thing before the next shift is taking over. And then that shift has to go until late at night because dinner chow may not end until like eight o'clock, nine o'clock, just depending on the kind of the installation, but they still have to do some work after the chow hall closes and everybody leaves. So somebody is there early as hell in the morning and somebody is there late at night. But in addition to the hours, there's also the factor of these dining facilities are still open on the weekends and holidays. So somebody has to be there. So that means you have a nice weekend to enjoy. Well, these guys have to still provide chow for soldiers they wanna eat on the weekends to be able to provide them with that dining facility type of option. So somebody is still working in that dining facility on the weekends. So that usually means they have like weird, crazy hours where their weekend may not be on Saturday and Sunday, like a lot of other individuals might get in the army. Their weekend might be Wednesday, Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, who knows? Sometimes I've even seen it where it's not even two back-to-back -back days. Sometimes it's a, it's a Wednesday and a Friday. And so you have like this weird kind of schedule where you don't get back-to-back -back days. Your weekends, like I said, may be really random. And then also along with that is holidays. These channels are still open on holidays, so you still have individuals that are working during Christmas, during New Year's, during whatever holiday that everybody else is getting off. These individuals may still have to work those holidays. They may have something where they fluctuate it to where, you know, some people work this holiday and other people are off this holiday. And then the next holiday, those other people vice versa type of thing, where a lot of other MOSs are getting every single holiday off in a lot of situations, unless they're like deployed or certain other kind of cases, but they're getting every single holiday off. These individuals are not getting that luxury. You also have like the common thing where during a holiday, like let's say if the holiday is on a Monday, the unit might schedule a Donza or a day of non-schedule activity on the Friday before the holiday to give you a nice four day weekend. Well, again, the chow halls don't close, so that's gonna make it to where there's gonna be a lot of cooks that are not gonna get that four day weekend. They may get a few of those days off, but probably not the full entire four day. Now they will close some defects. They usually will do it maybe like on the weekends or holidays where certain defects will close down to limit the, ma the manpower, but there are other channels that are still gonna be open. So that either means that maybe this unit, hey, this unit gets that weekend off, cool, for that holiday, but this unit has to work it. And they may kind of fluctuate and kind of alternate kind of weekends or holidays to be able to do that kind of a thing. So regardless, some defects are still open during those holidays and somebody is still gonna be working that defect. The next one on the list is a 91 Echo, which is an allied trade specialist. So basically this is a welder, right? So this is an individual that, you know, if you have something broken that needs to be welded, you know, together, then this might be the trained individual to be able to do that in a motor pool. But the thing I've often found is these individuals don't get to do their job all that often. 
So it's not really necessarily that it's on this list because the job sucks, it's because you don't really get to do the job that you signed up to do all that often. I have seen it many times where we had this individual in the motor pool and they just get stuck being a wheeled vehicle mechanic. And you can probably talk to a lot of people in this MLS and they may say that, sure, I do get to you know do a little bit of that welding stuff here and there, but the majority of my time is spent being a wheeled vehicle mechanic. So if you wanna be a mechanic, but you wanna also learn a little bit more about you know welding type of thing, this might be a great MOS for you. But if you're trying to specifically go into the army because you wanna be a welder, you wanna get out, do a lot of welding type of stuff, it's gonna be a little bit limited with this MOS in the experience that I have seen. I have seen it where they just don't get to do the MOS too often. Next up on the list is a 92 Mike, which is a mortuary affairs specialist. This one's on my list mainly because I feel like if you're not strong-minded to where you have the willpower and the mental power to be able to handle this type of MOS, this could be very hard on you because you have to process casualties in the army. So if you're in a scenario where you went on a deployment and soldiers got killed in action, well, you're the individual that needs to process those individuals to go back to the United States, to do whatever. So you're a mortician, right? You're someone that's kind of like working in the morgue in the army. And if you don't have the stomach to be able to handle that, the mental capacity to be able to handle that, this could probably do some pretty good damage to you, I'd feel like mentally. Having to see casualties on a maybe daily basis, probably people that are mutilated, messed up, maybe even sometimes people you know, that, that just feels like it's really gonna mess with someone mentally if you're not someone that could probably handle that. If that is something maybe you've already had some experience with, something you know you can handle and something you wanna do on the civilian side, then this might be a great job for you, right? This may be like one of your top MOSs, but if this was something like, well, I didn't have a whole lot of options available to me and this is one of them and I, I don't know, maybe that sounds cool and I'll just go ahead and do that and try that out for the army. Well, that can probably mess with you in, in a mental capacity. So I feel like that'd be really tough in that aspect. So I had to include it on that list because if you're not strong-minded, this probably could do some mental damage to you having to have to be around all these casualties all the time. And, and maybe like all the time is maybe a little bit kind of exaggerating type of thing because currently we don't have a whole lot of deployments going on. So I don't know what the garrison kind of lifestyle is like right now with these individuals, but nonetheless, you know, if you're probably not someone that could really handle being around dead bodies, this would probably be a tough MOS to kind of stomach. Next on the list is a 92 Sierra, which is shower, laundry, and clothing repair specialist. This one, I, I just feel like it's it's on my list because it just doesn't sound very glorious, right? You are basically the person in the army that is doing people's laundry for them. I'm not trying to knock people that are currently in this MOS. You know, it's a very valuable thing that we need. You know, we, we need people to be able to set up these portable showers in certain environments. We need people to get our uniforms clean. We need people to repair clothing type of thing, but it just doesn't sound, you know, that awesome if you're trying to explain to your grandkids what you did in the army. It just sounds kind of crazy, right? You are the person that has to go and clean their laundry. So the main thing I've usually seen with this MOS is people setting up these showers, especially like in a field environment, maybe in certain areas where they might have this set up as a tent and they're maintaining the equipment to make sure the showers are running. A little bit, I feel like a little bit less on the laundry and clothing repair side, but there may be other places where they use that a little bit more heavily, but it just doesn't sound like a very glorious MOS type of thing. Maybe it's a good one for being able to get some college on the side or just kind of getting your foot in the door to have some military experience. But I mean, what, what are you gonna translate that to on the, on the civilian side? You're trying to go into this MOS and then you maybe make a four year, six year career out of this and then get out of the army. What are you gonna do on the civilian side? I mean, maybe you wanna go and like create your own like laundry service type of thing, dry cleaning service type of thing. Maybe, maybe it'd be great for that if you're into that kind of a thing. But I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of options for that. I could be wrong, but that's why I put it on my list. Is it, it, it was an MOS I almost got stuck doing actually, and I turned it down. And it just seems like it's not a very, I don't know, not a, not a very cool MOS to come out of the army saying that you did people's laundry and sewed their clothes for them. All right, so we're gonna do the last one. The last one I feel like is the most controversial one. And I, that's definitely because, you know, in some people's minds, which have good valid reasons to say that this MOS is the best MOS, but other people may say it's the worst MOS type of thing. So without further ado, I feel like we just gotta, just gotta get into it. I'm gonna hear about it in the comments probably. 11 Bravo, Infantryman. So why do I feel like this is on the list of five worst ones? Well, it depends on the scenario, right? If you are someone, let's say, you want to join the army because you're like, I see this cool stuff happening on TV and movies or whatever. I want to be an infantryman. I want to go kicking in doors. I want to do some awesome weapon stuff and you know, be in combat. Well, 
that's not very common right now as of making this video. Not very many people are going on deployments. So if that was your aspect is to join the army, to be an infantryman, to do some awesome shit like you see on TV, you're probably not gonna do that because I'm talking to a lot of people right now that have been in the army for four years, six years, eight years, and they haven't gone on a single deployment. And that's because it's not very active right now. That could easily change, who knows, tomorrow. But right now, that's not a very active thing. If you were to talk to like an 11 Bravo, let's say in the early 2000s, all the way up until probably like 2014, probably type of thing, then yeah, they're gonna tell you some awesome stories about they went to Iraq, to Afghanistan type of thing. You talk to someone that joined maybe after 2015, maybe they was currently in as 11 Bravo, most of them probably don't have any cool stories. They're gonna tell you about how they got stuck on some shitty details and they go to the field a lot. If that's something you wanna do, you just wanna do the training part of it, then cool, maybe this is a great MOS for you. But if your expectation is to go into the army to do this awesome stuff that you see infantrymen doing right now, not a lot of them are doing that. Not to say that you won't do that. I mean, you could end up in one of those units that have a more heavily deployment type of, you know, schedule type of thing and could still go to like Iraq, which is still a combat zone, but not a whole lot of combat operations are happening over there. But you have a less likely chance of doing that awesome stuff that maybe you're looking forward to doing as an infantryman. And then the other key thing is if you only did like, let's say four years, five years, six years in the infantry and you get out, that doesn't translate to a whole lot of anything. There's not really much that that job translates to other than just simply that you had the military experience, which you can get that with any job. You don't have to specifically be an infantryman for that, right? You can say that I have some leadership skills as even a 92 Sierra, as an 88 Mike, as a 92 Yankee, or as anything, really. You could work your way up to be an NCO to have leadership skills in any MOS. So specifically an infantryman is not going to make it any kind of better that you have more infantry tactics skills type of thing. Well, guess what? Your corporate environment or whatever type of civilian job doesn't give a crap that you have all this cool tactical knowledge if you're trying to do security, then cool, maybe. If you're trying to do something specifically for the government, they may like that too, but anything outside of like government and security, they don't care about your tactical experiences. The only thing they're gonna care about is maybe that leadership quality, which you can get that with pretty much any MOS anyways. If your goal was to be an 11 Bravo and retire from the army, then really that's good for any MOS, really. You're, experience in the military, your experience as a leader and everything is gonna work great for your civilian kind of, you know, opportunities to open up to you. You don't necessarily have to do 11 Bravo to get that same kind of experience if you did 20 plus years though. So there isn't really anything specific to infantry that you can't get with other MOSs, right? A lot of people wanna join 11 Bravo because they see it looks badass, they do some awesome stuff, but right now your chances of you doing that badass stuff is very small. Not impossible because there are still people doing that stuff. It's just much, much smaller compared to if you had joined, like let's say in 2005. Because I put these MOSs on the list, like I said, I, at the beginning of the video, that doesn't mean that you should not join these MOSs. There are great reasons for you to still join these MOSs, but if I had to pick five, these are the five that I would pick. The 92 Golf, right? If you want to start a restaurant, you wanna be a chef, and you don't mind the long hours, you're expecting that, then this might be great MOS for you. Still join the Army. If you wanna be a 91 Echo and you understand that, hey, I may not get to weld that much, but I'm gonna get some great welding experience, but also probably learn how to work on vehicles, which can be great in the civilian world, still join as that MOS. If you have the mental capacity to be able to do a 92 mic to be that mortuary affairs specialist, and that's something you wanna do in the civilian side, or you wanna do 20 plus years in the army doing, you can still join that. But if you're someone that doesn't have that mental capacity and you just think it sounds cool, this may not be the MOS for you. The 92 Sierra, I'm sorry uh, for anybody who is in this MOS or was in this MOS. I don't know a whole lot of options of why this might be a good MOS for you. I mean, maybe if you, for some reason, want to have like a cool, you know, laundry facility or you want to have like a great seam seamstress, you know, place or something, then maybe this is a great option. Maybe your goal is to have like a dry cleaning business, then maybe this is a great MOS, but I don't know, really know of a whole lot other than that. And then of course, the most controversial one that I had, 11 Bravo, you wanna get a lot of fun experience, maybe have a good time in the army with doing weapons and training and all that stuff like that, then maybe this is number one on your list type of thing. But if your goal is to join the army, to do some of that cool, awesome stuff like you see in movies, your chances of that right now are pretty small. Most of the 11 Bravos that I know nowadays that are in that job are complaining that they're not getting to do their job. They're just doing a bunch of shitty details and a crap ton of field environment type of stuff and not doing any deployments. So keep that in mind. 
outside of your MOS, there might be other times where you might get stuck doing like a like a crappy detail, a crappy job, regardless of your MOS type of thing. And if you wanna hear about some of those, I have a video that I talk about that right here, so check that out. Down here is a video that YouTube recommends to you. They think that you're best fitted to watch that video, so check it out. If you wanna check out my links down in the description box for social media, all sorts of things, check out the links down below. I'm Christopher Chaos, I'll see you next time. See ya.